Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Rooms of Wonder, um, this sort of uh, magical page. And I have chosen the three candles to do today, I thought it would be fun. Um, I think I'm going to start with the actual flame. Um, I'm going to do them the same on every candle so it keeps it quite easy to start with. And then we'll move on to the actual candles. Now I tend to do flame... I've done some already actually on this page with the cauldron. I tend to do it dark to light. So I'm going to start with my darkest colour which will be the dark cadmium orange. We're using polychromos again. Just going to give it a sharpen because they are quite small. And what I usually do is put my darkest part at the bottom. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is accurate, but I just like the way it looks. And uh, so that's why I do it this way. You are perfectly welcome to go and have a look at some flames. I just need to reorganise my desk. There we go. And see how you think it should be. But uh, this is how I do it. Now I am going to use the cadmium orange, it's a little tricky for you to see, there we go. And just take that up, not quite to the tip, I'm going to go over the bit that I've already coloured and take that up just so we get a nice graduation of colour from sort of reddish orange to yellow. There we go. And then lastly, I'm going to use a fairly orangey yellow. This is the dark cadmium yellow. You can see it's not orange, but it's not like lemony yellow. I'm just going to go over the whole flame with this one and it will just help the colours to mix together. I mean, with polychromos, we're not actually moving pigment around, but it just helps to fill in the gaps and to sort of make it all coherent. There we go. Now around each we have these little lines indicating there's some glow coming out of them, which of course there would be. And we can colour that if we want to. I think I am going to, just for a bit of fun. So I'm going to grab a lighter yellow. This is the light cadmium yellow, so it's quite pale. I think it's going to be a bit too pale. I'm going to put that back. Hold, hold your horses. Let's go for this one. This is the light chrome yellow. It's a little bit darker. And what I'm going to do is go over and see where the lines are here, but just take that all the way around. So we've got a bit of a gap around um, the flame and then the sort of shiny light. I don't know why I'm doing it like that, but that's, that's sort of how it's drawn. So I'm just sort of copying those little circles I'm going over the top of actually like that. I think they're all sort of supposed to be part of the glow. And the same on this one. There we go. It doesn't look realistic but I think it looks warm and inviting. Okay, so now we can, we've got the three candles. I, I'm not sure. I think I will do them all slightly differently just to show you some different ways of doing it. The first one this rather um, large candle. I think the base looks like it could be um, a sort of china base maybe. So I'm going to colour it as if it's a sort of painted ceramic, shall we say. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. So let's make a start. So I'm going to use the red violet. It's going to be quite dark um, to start with on this base part. Now I'm going to make it a little lighter in the middle as if there's a bit of shine as if it's a glazed sort of pot and it would also help to give it a little bit of shape you've seen me do this a lot of times before if you've watched my videos where I will really emphasize a darker more intense color there and less towards the center and it just helps it look like it's not so flat and a little bit shiny at the same time. I think that's a little bit too much shine. So I'm just going to layer over that a little bit more. We don't want any white. It's not supposed to be metallic. I mean, you can do it metallic, but that isn't, wasn't my intention. There, I'm happy with that. Now the sort of top part, I'm just going to do it in a different colour, as if it was a sort of, um, I don't know, painted in a different colour. So I have the light red violet, so that was the red violet, this is the light red violet. So from the names we know naturally they're going to 
work together and uh, it's obviously going to be a lighter shade we can see that by looking don't need to know the name to do that and again following a similar method where it's a little darker on the edge and lighter in the middle now the candle itself I thought I would do them differently in different colours but I'm thinking a little bit about whether we're going to try and match it in with the cloths and have some sort of coherence and so maybe we'll do pink purple pink and then do blue bit blue pink and purple all go well together so that's what I'm sort of thinking so this candle I'm thinking I want a sort of purpley pink type color going on um, that's going to match the bowl that it's in so I'm going to grab this one this is the um, light magenta and I think it will work sorry you can't see that very well <laughs> Now, it's always a bit tricky with these dribbly bits. I'm going to colour the whole candle in a light layer of light magenta to start with. Now, with some candles that you may have experienced, you may have bought burnt candles yourself, the dribbles, for want of a better word, can be in white. The, sometimes it's only the outside of the candle that's coloured and this bit isn't. But colouring in white is always quite tricky, so I wouldn't recommend you try and do that unless you really want a challenge so I do it the same color but what I do is I make it a little bit lighter so I'll show you so I'm going to make this side now Johanna's drawn some little dots so that's guiding us to start with where she thinks it should be darker but actually I'm going to continue that across and make it darker all the way along and a bit lighter in the middle and hopefully it will help the candle to look a little bit more cylindrical which of course it would be like that we can always add a slightly different color now with the dribbly bits we can do a similar thing which is quite lightly so just make the end ones a little bit darker but I still want it to be lighter than this but what I'm going to do Let's grab the magenta, if I can find it, here we go, and do a little bit of shadow, shows up so well, underneath our dribbly bits. Is there a word? Is there a word? <laughs> dribbly bits sounds very, very wrong. Anyway, I'm going to put some shadow under these because they would be standing out from the main candle. So just all the way around the edge, try and go over the black a little bit and then just extend your colour out just a little. I have done that a little bit too thickly for my liking. That's better on that one. To create the impression that there's a shadow under there. Like that. It's probably a little bit dark, to be honest. I think I'm actually going to use some of this to darken the whole candle a bit to make it just work better. There, I think that's a bit better. There we go. So there is our first candle. Now, let's do our central one in a blue, shall we? Now, we have this holder. Now, to me, this holder looks like a metallic type one. I would say silver. So we're going to have a go at doing that in silver. And silver and blue work well together, um, I think. So I'm going to use a couple of shades of cold grey. I'm going to start whoops, with the cold grey five and do the darker areas. So when you're picking... Just think about where things are touching, like here, be a little bit darker, where there be some shadow, and then just fade out from there. With the this main part, I would always do it darker here and lighter here. There are other methods of doing metallics where you don't put the shine line right in the centre. I like to keep it easy for me, fairly straightforward. So now, the, with silver, I find you need a fair bit of white to make it look shiny. Because it's a pale colour, grey, I don't know, just seems to work more better for me. This is called grey 3. And we're just going to extend 
this grey colour a little bit but leave a fairly large white area. We can always make it smaller. It's, well, you can make it bigger with an eraser, but it's easier to get it right. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it there, all apart from my handle. This, I'm actually not going to move that one much. I'm just going to make, because the shine would sort of be nearer the top. I think I just want to darken that bit a little bit. that okay now blue candle um, I quite think I like a really dark blue candle so I'm actually going to grab this really dark dark indigo and we'll start off lightly like we did with the other one so you can have a really light touch and make this very dark pencil hardly mark the paper can you see but we're going to go a bit darker here And just bring that in so we've got a more intense colour on the outside like the other candle. Now the top part again just a little bit of darker on the edge but not too much and try and draw in that shadow a little bit like that. I'm just going to darken this edge a bit more. The only problem with the indigo is it's not very pretty. It's quite blackish, isn't it? But you know, it's done now. You could use a sort of cobalt blue, which might give you a nicer colour. Now, the end one, as I said, um, we're going to go purple, but the holder to me, I'm going to have a go at gold. And we're going to do quite a simple gold because we haven't got a lot of space to play with. So, hmm, where should we start? Let's start with this brown. We'll start with the walnut brown. And we'll just go there. There, here, here and here. Then we'll grab a lighter brown. Can we carry on? No, can we go? We'll try the brown ochre. That might be a bit too much of a jump. But let me try it first. That's okay. If you keep your, as long as you keep your um, darker brown fairly light, if that makes any sense and it'll work. Now I'm going to grab my green gold, my favourite friend, one of them, take that in. Quite a fair bit because this is going to be our penultimate colour. Apart from a bit of tweaking and we're going to finish with the Naples yellow. Now often I would do another two or three colours in this mix. Remember to leave some white. Try and line those white areas up as best you can. There we go. Now I'm going to grab the walnut brown and just um, do a little bit of shadowing um, under here. I'm going to sharpen it. Um, where the um, pieces of the candle holder overlap. Under here. A little bit of shadow it would be a little bit darker. It's sort of set in as well. There'd be a little bit there too. There we go. Okay, now our candle purple. Um, I think we'll go for quite a dark mauve. The uh, mauve, I mean a dark, dark sort of purple, because um, it's going to work well with the gold, I think. So, again, a light layer over the whole candle and then start to darken up from the edge like that. Gosh I just paranoidly looked at my um,
camera thinking I'd forgotten to press the record button. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, so it's a little bit darker. And the same with the um, this top bit, just make it a little bit dark on the edge. And then we want to do this sort of shadowy bit. I'm just going to darken that a bit more. Okay, now we've got our little cloths. And as I said, I want them to be like the colours of the candles, but I think we can mix it up a bit. So I'm thinking... I don't want pink under here because we've got a lot of pink, so I'm going to do purple here. So I'm going to grab a, um, this is the violet, and I'm going to do the stars and the edge of this little cloth with the violet. I'm going to press quite hard. I want it to be quite intense. It needs to stand out, I think. these stars are fun. Now if you wish you could get out your um, metallics or glitter pens to go over these lines and make them gold and shiny. I think that would look quite nice. I don't know why I just sort of decided when I started this page I wasn't going to use any glitter pen on this page. I'm not, I'm not really sure why I decided that. Oops. Now I have sky blue for the background. I just want it to be paler using a circular motion just to try and get it reasonably even. Quite a grey blue. I think it's okay. Then over on the other one we're going to have a bit of pink. I want to, I'm using different pinks to the ones in the actual candles. I don't know why. Um, I'm going to use yeah, let's use the fuchsia pink. And we'll do a sort of striped, I'm thinking. Don't know why. I think it'd be nice to have a bit more blue in it. I can hear music. I don't know where it's coming from. I guess next door. One of my neighbours has gone out. He was looking very smart. So, uh, in fact, he was picked up by two people who were brushing off his suit, making him look even smarter. Now, my final blue, I want to be quite a nice, dark, vibrant blue. So I'm going to use the phthalo blue. Whoop. It's also got a lovely sharp point on it. It's going to stand out a fair bit. So we're nearly there. Let's have a look. Are we done? Yeah, I think so. Oops, we're not quite in shot. Hang on. There we go. So there are our three candles. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I've got four designs left. I'm not sure where to go next, but you'll find out when you tune in for the next video so remember to subscribe please and that will give you a notification if you click the bell as to when my next video is coming out so you won't miss it but for now thank you so much for watching i hope that you have a really lovely day and happy coloring